Let me kind of ask a, a weird, maybe a difficult question. Part of the, it has to do with, I've been uh, recently reading a lot about World War II. I'm currently reading a book I recommend for people, which is, uh, uh, as a Jew, it's been difficult to read, but uh, The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. Yeah. Um, so let me just ask about like the nature of genius, the nature of evil. If we look at somebody like uh, Einstein, we look at Hitler, Stalin, modern day Jeffrey Epstein, just uh, folks who through their life have done with Einstein, done works of genius, and with the others I mentioned have done evil on this world. What do we think about that in a live wired brain? Like how do, how do we think about these extreme people Here's here's what I'd say. This is a very big and difficult question, but what I would say briefly on it is, um, you know, first of all, I saw a cover of Time Magazine some years ago, uh, and it was a big, you know, sagittal slice of the brain, and it said something like, um, what makes us good and evil? And there was a little spot pointing to it, and there was a picture of Gandhi, and there was a little spot that was pointing to Hitler. <laughs> and and th these Time Magazine covers always make me mad because... It's so goofy to think that we're going to find some spot in the brain or something. Yeah. Instead, the interesting part is because we're live wired, we are all about the world and the culture around us. So somebody like Adolf Hitler got all this positive feedback about what was going on and the crazier and crazier the ideas he had. And he's like, let's set up death camps and murder a bunch of people and so on somehow he was getting positive feedback from that and all these other people, they, they're all, you know, spun each other up. And you look at anything like, I mean, look at the, you know, um, the, the cultural uh, revolution in China or the, um, you know, the, the Russian revolution or things like this, where you look at these and you think, my God, how do people all behave like this? But it's easy to see groups of people spinning themselves up in particular ways where they all say, well, would I have thought this was right in a different circumstance, I don't know, but Fred thinks it's right and Steve thinks it's right. Everyone yeah. around me seems to think it's right. And so um, part of the maybe downside of having a live wired brain is that you can get crowds of people doing things um, <laughs> as a group. So it's interesting to, you know, we would pinpoint Hitler as saying that's the evil guy. But in a sense, I think it was Tolstoy who said the the king becomes um, slave to the to the people. In other words... You know, Hitler was just a representation of whatever was going on with that huge crowd that he was surrounded with. So, um, so I only bring that up to say that it's, you know, it's very difficult to say what it is about this person's brain or that person's brain. He obviously got feedback for what he was doing. The other thing, by the way, uh, about what we often think of as being evil in society is um, my lab recently published some work on in groups and out groups, which is a very important part of this puzzle. So it turns out that we are very, we are very, you know, engineered to care about in groups versus out groups. And this seems to be like a really fundamental thing. So mm -hmm. we did this experiment in my lab where we brought people in, we stick them in the scanner, and we, I don't know, and stop me if you know this, but uh, we show them on the hand, uh, sorry, we show them on the screen six hands. And uh, the computer boop, 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 goes around, randomly picks a hand, and then you see that hand get stabbed with a syringe needle. So you actually see a syringe needle enter the hand and come out. And it's really, uh, what that does is that triggers uh, parts of the pain matrix, this areas in your brain mm -hmm. that involve involved in feeling physical pain. Now, the interesting thing is it's not your hand that was stabbed. So what you're seeing is, is empathy. This is you seeing someone else's hand get stabbed. You feel like, oh, God, this is awful, right? Okay. Um, we contrast that, by the way, with somebody's hand getting poked with a, a Q-tip, which is, you know, looks visually the same, but it's, um, you don't have that same level of response. Now what we do is we label each hand with a, with a one-word label, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, atheist, Scientologist, Hindu. And now doo -doo -doo -doo, the computer goes around, picks a hand, stabs the hand. And the question is, how much does your brain care about all the people in your outgroup versus the one label that happens to match you? Mm-hmm. And it turns out for everybody across all religions, they care much more about their in-group than their out-group. And when I say they care, what I mean is you get a bigger response from their brain. Everything's the same. It's the same hands. It's just a one-word label. You care much more about your in-group than your out-group. 
And I wish this weren't true, but this is how humans are. I wonder how fundamental that is, or if it's a, it's the emergent thing about culture. Like if we lived alone with, like if it's genetically built into the brain, like this, mm -hmm. this longing for tribe. So I'll, so I'll tell you, we addressed that. So here's what we did. There are two, actually there are two other things we did as part of this study that I think matter for this point. One is, so, okay, so we show that you have a much bigger response. And by the way, this is, this is not a cognitive thing. This is a very low level basic response to seeing pain in somebody. Okay. Great study, by the way. Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. What we did next is we, we next have it where we say, okay, the year is 2025 and these three religions are now in a war against these three religions and it's all randomized, right? But what you see is your thing and you have two allies now against these others. And now it happens over the course of many trials. You see everybody get stabbed at different times. And the question is, do you care more about your allies? And the answer is yes. Suddenly, people who a moment ago, you didn't really care when they got stabbed. Now, <clears throat> simply with this one word thing that you're, they're now your allies, you care more about them. But then what I wanted to do was look at how ingrained is this or how arbitrary is it? So we brought new participants in. And we said, here's a coin. Toss the coin. If it's heads, you're an Augustinian. If it's a tails, you're a Justinian. These are totally made up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they toss it, they get whatever. We give them a, a, a band that says, you know, Augustinian on it, whatever tribe they're in now. Um, and they get in the scanner and they see a thing on the screen that says the Augustinians and Justinians are two warring tribes. Then you see a bunch of hands, some are labeled Augustinian, some are Justinian. And now you care more about whichever team you're on than the other <laughs> team, even though it's totally arbitrary. And you know it's arbitrary because right. you're the one who tossed the coin. Yep. So it's... It, it, it's a state that's very easy to find ourselves in. In other words, just before walking in the door, they'd never even heard of Augustinian versus yeah. Justinian. And now their brain is representing it simply because they're told they're on this team. You know, uh, now I did my own personal study of this. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, uh, So once you're an Augustinian, that tends to be sticky because I've been a Packers fan, a uh, Green Bay Packers fan my whole life. Now when I'm in Boston with like the the Patriots, it's been tough going for my live wire brain to switch to the Patriots to be. <laughs> so once you become, it's, it's it's interesting. Once the tribe is sticky, yeah, uh, but that's true. That's that's it. You know, uh, you know, we never tried that about saying, okay, now you're a Justinian and you were an Augustinian. We, we never switch. saw how how, how uh, sticky it is. But there are studies of this of monkey troops uh, on some island, um, and what happens is they look at the way monkeys behave when they're part of this tribe and how they treat members of the other tribe of monkeys. And then what they do, I've forgotten how they do that exactly, but they end up switching a monkey so he ends up in the other troop. And very quickly, they end up becoming a part of that other troop and, and hating and behaving badly towards their original troop. These are fascinating studies, by the way. Yeah. I, this, this, is, uh, this is beautiful.